so this year at Miller Middle School we've been working on implementing the IB, International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program. Um, this is a huge shift for us um, at Miller. The change for us is that we're moving away from a traditional spoon-fed model of instruction um, that's used worldwide to a more student-initiated model of learning and we're using IB Middle Years Program to help drive that. IB at Miller is um, really in essence a, a practice model. Um, IB methodology is designed to enhance and um, improve teaching. Um, it's not a curriculum, it's a, it's, a, it's a pedagogical practice. And so the great thing about IB is that it's a lens that we look through to teach that's different from the traditional sit and get spoon fed lens. It's a very interactive uh, approach to teaching and learning. Um, it's a very uh, broad perspective on teaching and learning. In other words, it encompasses international and global perspective. It uh, generates students um, to think and to create and to conceptualize ideas um, and to develop their thought process in different ways. And um, it's exciting for our students that come up from elementary school and the primary years program to then continue on through the middle years program. And um, it's really, um, as I said, fun and exciting to watch the students grow academically and to start to really embrace and, and push their own learning forward. The classrooms that you'll see today and the teachers that are highlighted are um, using these practices within their classroom. Um, Corey has been working on her IB methodology uh, through the lens of, most recently of human ingenuity and engaging the students in, in ways to think um, outside of the box and to uh, look at the impact um, uh, on the world uh, through, the, through the lens of social studies um, and through the lens of uh, international mindedness. Okay, so the K-9 unit um, was an IB unit that we um, developed and the actual exhibition was the final product and it began with us all sitting down and looking at all of our standards and um, looking for commonalities to create an essential question around um, that we felt would be meaningful for the kids and a good um, topic of exploration for them and so we chose dogs because dogs are uh, high engagement um, for students. And so the essential question that we wrapped our unit around, um, how has the domestication of the dog changed human society or influenced human society? And what we did is we each took an element of that question and um, tied it into the content in our classes. Um, we worked on writing strategies in Spanish. They were writing about the dog that they chose themselves in Spanish. Um, in science, they were looking at the different traits that these dogs were bred to exhibit. In math, they were looking at linear relationships. In language arts, obviously, they were working on the oral component. And in social studies, we were looking at um, you know, the context um, and the history under which these dogs were bred um, and how these breeds kind of spread throughout different cultures. Um, and then obviously, the other piece of that is community and service. And the students, um, as a team, decided to go ahead and raise money for the Humane Society. And that right there created that relevant connection and that community and service piece that a lot of the students really latched onto because they could relate um, to having their own pets, to um, caring about animals and wanting to care for the animals that are in our community. Students are owning their learning. Um, 
students are asking questions, they're asking essential questions, they're learning how to use um, investigation strategies, shall I say, um, to come up with their own inferences and theories and make predictions, and they test them out on their own. Um, there's a lot of di dialogue and discussion, um, grouping students in different ways, having students respond on little smart board or little whiteboards in their groups and reporting back out to class, sometimes working in pairs. Um, but anytime you can get the students to generate their own ideas versus just telling them what they should think, I think that's where the power of IB comes in because information is readily available anywhere in our world, but to know what to do with that information, um, that's an important skill that's going to take the kids um, you know, out of middle school, through high school, and through life is they need to know how to synthesize that information and make their own decisions. Okay, what type of thinking do you do when you take different facts and ideas and you weave them together? Synthesis. Synthesis. So the idea with engagement strategies is to keep um, students connected to the curriculum. It, it does start though with um, engaging their thinking with some sort of question and that question um, either might be getting them to access their background knowledge and trying to connect um, what we're going to be doing today with what they already know about that subject and even what some of the other cross-curricular connections. And so you guys today, our subject, we're going to be talking about the um, class again. We're looking at the question of the United States is a classless, egalitarian society. So I'm just going to take a little temperature right now. Stop your feet if you think the statement is true. Stop your feet if you think the statement is false. All right. So we're going to jump off today. Um, I want you guys at your tables to just quickly to talk about what are these essential questions? Why do classes exist anyway? What are the effects of class hierarchy on Americans or rankings and where people are? And does growing up in a particular class affect our self-image, our expectations in life? If so, how? So at your table, I want you guys to take a look. And I want you to talk about one of these questions. Just do a quick report out for your table. Um, well, we talked about why classes exist, and why and I kind of discussed that people who really work hard in life and go to school and do some, they start out with lower paying jobs, but they kind of work their way up. They make it into higher classes because they put a lot of dedication and work into their life. But some people in the lower classes, they might have tried, but they just they didn't try hard enough or someone uh, stopped them from achieving their goal. So they were in a lower class. Okay, so effort might be a component. Yeah. Warm up, and then there's also closure. She'll ask her students to exit with the next, you know, leave the classroom with an exit ticket, um, where she's she's challenging them to again. Uh, produce their learning as they leave and to, uh, and to engage them uh, through essential questioning in, uh, through the unit and lead them into the next lessons.